Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed for our monthly GPU pricing update. Who would have guessed the GPU market still kind of sucks, but there is some good news to share this month in that with a little bit of price movement for new GPUs, the market sucks a little less than it did last month. So we'll break all that down in a moment, but before we do... Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Sapphire and the new Nitro Plus and Pure Radeon RX 7800 XT graphics cards. We recently tested the Nitro Plus in our day one review and found it to be excellent, delivering cool thermals coupled with a low operating volume. The Nitro Plus also looks great with its clean silver fan shroud, metal backplate and ARGB light bar which dons the left and right sides of the card, providing some very impressive looking effects that can be controlled via the Trix software. Also included are dual ball bearing fans, quick connect fans, dual BIOS, external ARGB control, and more. Then for those of you after that clean white look, the new Pure series has you covered. I mean, how good does this thing look? For more information, please check the link in the video description. The big news across the last month in the graphics card space was the launch of two new AMD Radeon GPUs, the RX 7800 XT and RX 7700 XT. Hopefully you've already seen the full reviews of these products for our full thoughts, but basically we're looking at two quite different cards. The RX 7800 XT is a decent buy at $500 US, offering better value and a few other small benefits over the RX 6800 XT. But the RX 7700 XT doesn't look as good, being priced far too close to the 7800 XT for the level of performance it offers. It may not surprise you to learn then that the level of interest from GPU buyers has pretty much matched the sentiment from reviews. From what we've heard, the RX 7800 XT has been one of the higher demand graphics cards released this generation, not a world beater in terms of sales volumes and interest, but certainly one of the better releases this year. Good sell through of cards on day one, not an across the board sellout like we used to see five years ago, but plenty of interest in the 7800 XT, especially for models priced around the MSRP. Depending on your region, it actually could have been reasonably difficult to get a $500 model or equivalent in your region's pricing on day one, and in the days after, those stock levels and pricing has been slowly stabilizing. In contrast to this is the RX 7700 XT, which has been in relatively low demand and really there hasn't been much difficulty purchasing one now or at launch. As we pointed out in our reviews, there just isn't a lot of value to be had from this model. Most buyers may as well spend that little bit more to get the 7800 XT, which has superior cost per frame, and that's certainly been felt in the market. We haven't seen a ton of price movement for this model yet, but we strongly believe this will be another RX 7900 XT situation where the $450 US MSRP just isn't a viable price and will need to drop closer to $400 for it to have a place in the market. For context, the 7900 XT launched at a disastrous $900 and dropped to $800 or less within three to four months. Steve pointed out in his recent RX 7800 XT versus RTX 4070 head-to-head -head that regional pricing for the 7800 XT has also been a little problematic in the weeks after launch. Not so much an issue in the US where models at $500 have been available most of the time, but in other countries like Australia, the 7800 XT hasn't been as attractive. Here the 7800 XT is 880 Australian dollars, which is the equivalent of around $520 US, so a little bit of price inflation there. But in some other countries, we've seen pricing stabilize to around the equivalent of $500. The UK, France, Germany all have pricing around where it should be right now, at least for the cheapest models. What has put the most pressure on the RX 7800 XT's value is NVIDIA's recent unofficial but also almost official price cut for the RTX 4070, down from $600 US to $550. And this isn't just for one model. You now have the option of multiple base model 4070s at $550 at retailers like Newegg. And this pricing has also flowed through to other regions like Australia, the UK, and Germany, which hasn't always been the case when we see pricing drop in the US. It's well worth checking out updated pricing in your region, not just for the new 7800 XT, but also for the RTX 4070. This presents quite a few interesting points. Firstly, it shows that Nvidia has a lot of room to quickly reduce prices in the face of actual competition. The RTX 4070 was one of Nvidia's better current generation releases, but the price was still rather horrible compared to where a model with the 4070's performance should be sitting. Just a few weeks after AMD started putting price pressure on the 4070, with most reviews suggesting the 7800 XT is the better buy of the two cards, Nvidia effortlessly drops prices. 
This shows that Nvidia is likely making a seriously large profit from each 4070 sold. I wouldn't believe for one second that these cards are extremely expensive to produce and Nvidia must sell them for such a high price. And also Nvidia are very much still tracking their competition and making moves to reposition their products to be more attractive to buyers. Secondly, this price adjustment has largely killed the great value proposition of the RX 7800 XT and the reason why it was recommended in our review and others. The RTX 4070 goes from being 20% more expensive to just 10% more expensive. Now for the most part, the 4070 is still the slower product. In our 45 game benchmark, we had the 7800 XT as much as 8% faster on average for 4K rasterization and around 2% slower for 1440p ray tracing with a general lead of about 5%. You can see why that would be a highly attractive buy when the 4070 is also 20% more expensive. But with just a 10% margin between the cards right now in the US and a lot of other regions, the RTX 4070 now becomes a viable option. If you're interested in features like DLSS, both the superior quality of DLSS super resolution at resolutions like 1440p and the addition of frame generation support, or if you would like the superior power efficiency of the 4070, well, the RTX 4070 isn't out of the running. I don't think it's an amazing buy, and you can certainly make a case for the 7800 XT as well. It's cheaper and generally faster, but the RTX 4070 isn't the clearly inferior choice it was just a few weeks ago. And this is what competition does to the market, and by that I mean actual competition, not AMD basically matching the price structure of Nvidia with new launches. The 7800 XT was a genuinely compelling launch. It offered superior value to what was already on the market, and Nvidia was forced to respond. Without that competition, we'd be stuck with inflated GeForce pricing, stagnant offerings from Team Red, and worse value products for everyone. That's why it's a bit disappointing to hear rumors that AMD may not be releasing high-end products for their next generation RDNA 4 series that would reduce competition and probably not be that good for the market. When we look across the entirety of NVIDIA's RTX 40 series and their current prices, we can see the impact of competition for several models. The RTX 4060 is now available for as low as $280, the RTX 4080 continues to be priced at $1100, and we've got a bit of price movement for the recently released RTX 4060 Ti as well. The 8GB card can be had for $380 US, though that's not especially unusual, while the 16GB card has dropped from a disgusting $500 MSRP to $450. The only two NVIDIA GPUs that are priced at the MSRP are the 4090 and the 4070 Ti. It's also been pretty hilarious to see the RTX 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte drop to $450 after Nvidia told us adding an extra 8 gigabytes of memory was a very expensive exercise, which totally meant it had to be priced $100 above the 8 gig model. It turns out, as everyone expected, that reasoning was total BS. Of course, Nvidia didn't have to make the 16 gig model $100 more. They wanted to do that to bleed customers dry. And when most people turned away from such a stupid price, they were practically forced into change. That and AMD launching the faster RX 7700 XT at the same price. When we look at AMD's current generation lineup, as expected, there's not a lot going on here. Both new GPUs launched at their MSRP, and pricing for other models remains similar to previous months. The RX 7900 XTX is still around $950 US. The 7900 XT is sat between $750 and $800 bucks for the last six months. And the RX 7600 is $10 below MSRP, nothing to get excited about. We also have Intel's Arc series, which like AMD GPUs, hasn't changed much in price compared to last month. Intel are offering the cheapest new 16GB GPU on the market with the Arc A770 16GB available for just $320, and generally their lineup is quite fairly priced in my opinion. If you're after a brand new previous generation GPU, it's clear that supply for some of these models is drying up. There aren't a lot of RTX 3070 and 3070 Ti graphics cards on shelves these days, and I would expect within a few months they won't be available at all. With that said, if you were specifically after a GeForce GPU, you just wouldn't buy the RTX 3070, as the 8GB RTX 4060 Ti is basically the same price. It performs similarly, but gives you access to DLSS3 frame generation and AV1 encoding while being significantly more power efficient. 
The RTX 3060 is also priced around the same mark as the RTX 4060, so again, you just get the newer Ada Lovelace model for the same reasons as you'd get a 4060 Ti over the 3070. The 3050 at $225 is the cheapest NVIDIA GPU available these days, and it's unclear when it will be replaced, though it's an awful buy relative to Radeon products that are both faster and cheaper. Speaking of Radeon products, there are still quite a few RDNA 2 models in the market, and this is causing AMD to compete with themselves at many price points. The RX 6650 XT at $235 is just 5% slower than the RX 7600, but is 10% cheaper, making it the obvious buy for someone after a card around this price and level of performance. The RX 6600 is also a great deal at $200 US. Supply doesn't appear to be much of a concern either, still plenty of these models on sale and I imagine that's causing a bit of a headache for AMD who would much rather be selling you an RX 7600 for $270 with no last gen options to consider. Then more around the $300 and $400 price points, we haven't seen much price movement, although the RX 6750 XT is now down at $330, making it great value in this price range. The RX 6800 hasn't budged from $430, so it continues to be a better buy than the RX 7700 XT, given it's around the same level of performance and efficiency, while being slightly cheaper and offering 4GB more VRAM. The 6800 XT has also become even better value at $490 US, a move clearly designed to clear out stock now that the 7800 XT has launched. The used market isn't particularly interesting this month, so we'll just breeze through it. Really not much has changed compared to last month. We're certainly not seeing a massive impact from the launch of new Radeon GPUs, at least at this early stage. Prices aren't going up, which is a good thing, and there's an increasing amount of ampere supply as some buyers upgrade to newer GPUs. But generally speaking, if you're looking at the used market last month, hoping for a bit of price movement this month, we really aren't seeing that, and we haven't seen that for many months now. So that's the current state of the graphics card market. Unfortunately, we are not suddenly in a great position for GPU prices, but at least an increase in competition from new Radeon products has led to slightly less suckage than in prior months. And it does seem that all three vendors are monitoring the situation closely and are willing to make moves when their graphics card isn't in the best position. It's just not the level of movement we'd like to see. For those buying a new graphics card, the top of the market has been pretty flat for the last six months. We haven't seen any substantial price adjustments for cards in the $800 tier and above, so if you were interested in models like the RTX 4070 Ti, RX 7900 XTX, or RTX 4090, the market has very much settled. If you don't want to grab something right now, I'd be on the lookout for flash sales as we approach the holiday season. Around the $500 tier is where we've seen the most movement due to the launch of the RX 7800 XT and 7700 XT. These new cards, as well as generally slow sales, has seen Nvidia reduce the RTX 4070 to $550 and the RTX 4060 Ti 16GB to $450 in an unofficial but almost official capacity. Especially for those deciding between the 7800 XT and RTX 4070, the choice has become a lot more difficult as the strong value of AMD's brand new GPU has been eroded somewhat by Nvidia's price cut. That's the beauty of competition. Right now, you could certainly make a case to go for either Team Red or Team Green around this price. If you're after something at or below $400, it typically makes the most sense to buy a previous generation GPU, especially a Radeon model, which continue to be excellent value. The RX 6800 is what I'd be recommending around $430, the RX 6750 XT is a clear winner for $330, and the RX 6600 continues to be excellent value at $200. It's hard to justify the RTX 4060, even at slightly below MSRP, while Intel's Arc GPUs have come a long way, especially if you're after a lower cost model like the A750. Anyway, that's it for this month's GPU pricing update video. Hopefully you all are still enjoying this series. We will be continuing to do it throughout the rest of this year so that we can have a look at how holiday pricing will be impacting GPUs. I would be expecting a few more sales for some of these models as we get more into that sort of Black Friday sales in the next couple of months. Obviously, Black Friday is still a couple of months away, but we will be seeing more sales for some of these products. And that will be very interesting to see what cards get discounts and when. If you do want to support our independent testing and 
and all the analysis and videos that we make here at Hardware Unbox, then please do consider supporting us through our Patreon and Floatplane accounts. Links are in the description below. You'll gain access to some pretty cool benefits like our Discord community and our monthly live stream, which is coming up very soon. We didn't do one last month because Steve was a little bit unwell, but we will be back, I think, probably next week for a monthly live stream. So stay tuned for that one. Anyway, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.